everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, we're working with Topaz Studio 2. I'm calling this one uh, Working with Layers, a Deep Dive. Layers are really cool, and I've worked with layers in the past in my videos, but I'm going to show you some really cool things that you can do with layers today and really help you, uh, especially when you're creating artistic and very creative images. This is going to be a great tutorial for you today. You're going to learn a lot. Without any further ado, let's get started. Today's tutorial is about working with layers inside of Topaz Studio 2. Now, I have a lot of videos where I'm always using layers, obviously, but I want to show you today how you can get creative with your layering. In other words, you could take a layer that was on the bottom and move it to the top or anywhere in between a bunch of other layers and change the entire look of the image for creative artistic possibilities. And that's what we're going to explore today. Now, layers inside of Topaz Studio 2 all interact with one another, and this is a non-destructive workflow so the creative possibilities are endless so let's come up here and grab a filter here and this will be on our first layer let's just grab a texture filter here and i'm just going to grab any old texture here oh let's see like this dark fur texture here let's pull up its opacity a little bit maybe something like that okay and of course we can come and play with all the controls let's give it maybe a little more detail so we can see that texture coming through let me go to my layer mask and get a brush and maybe just remove some of that texture from off of the cat let me just pull this transparency up to about 0.36 here and let's just uh, remove some of this texture off the cat here Again, I'm not making a piece of art today. I'm just showing you how these layers interact with each other in a non-destructive manner, which is really cool. Okay, so that's fine. That's, that's really all we need to do here. Okay, so now let's add another filter on top of that. Let's say, uh, let's grab a impression filter here. Turn it into a painting, something like that. We'll leave it like that. These little white... Uh, uh, pieces of canvas showing through here if I want to get rid of those and I do this a lot I'll just come down to texture in the impression filter and change this to uh, original and you'll see those little lines go away but already we have a nice little uh, painting of this cute little kitty cat here okay so now let's add another another layer to this so let's click add filter and let's add uh say a precision contrast which if you watch my videos in the past you know i like to use the precision contrast when i'm using uh like the impression filter so let's just play with this a little bit let's add a little bit of micro a little bit of low okay and how about some medium maybe something like that all right so now I have three different layers, a precision contrast, an impression, and a texture layer, okay, with three different filters, obviously. And now if I come back to, to the first uh, layer that I've added this texture filter to, let's click on it. And now I'll say, for instance, I come in here and I change the uh, texture. Let's put a different texture on there. Let's go with this one right here, okay? now. Notice there's a little blue bar that comes across here, uh, letting you know what's happening to the image. In other words, it's uh, recalculating itself, kind of like on a GPS. It's uh, when I change an, a setting on a certain filter, it has to readjust everything uh, non-destructively, and it all works and interacts together. Okay, so for instance, if I change it to this Elysium filter, I'm going to click this and watch that blue bar change. You see that, and you notice how the image has changed. Now, here's where experimentation comes in, because now we can come here and we can experiment. We can say, hey, that looks pretty cool. I can take my opacity, maybe and pull that back a little bit or pull it up more and play around with it. OK, and we can try some different filter or different uh, textures in here. Here's another texture. It gives me a different look. Here's another texture here. So. And what's happening here, the impression filter is readjusting itself. The precision contrast filter is re working itself onto the image, okay, in its own way. And I could come down to the bottom of the layer stack and see the texture filter right here. And then notice these two rows of these six dots on the left of, of the uh, layer right here. I can take this and I can drag this. Say, for instance, I can drag this above the impression filter and watch how the image changes. 
See how it readjusts itself? Isn't that cool? And this is where I'm saying this is where the experimentation comes in. Or what if I took this uh, precision contrast filter and drug it underneath the impression filter? Okay, see how things have changed there. Now, what if I put it in between the impression filter and the texture filter? You know, it looks, it looks very similar, but now when I take it and move it to the top of the stack, it gets, you know, it get, you see a lot more of that effect showing through there. So that's pretty cool, right? I went ahead and uh, deleted all the last filters and added a new set of filters up here in, on different layers here, just to drive this point home to you, okay? Let's say we're kind of happy with the image, but we want to experiment with it a little bit, all right? So now we could come here and say, you know, what would happen if I would take this abstraction filter and drag it to the top of the layer stack? Now watch what happens when I do that. Notice how the image totally changes its, its entire look. Isn't that really neat? Now let's pull it back down to where it was. And let's grab another one of these filters. And now let's take this impression filter and let's uh, drag it to the bottom of the layer stack and see what we get. And like I said, this is where your, uh, your uh, experimentation could really pay off. See, now we got a whole, whole different look to it. And what if I were to take it and put it above the abstraction? see what kind of look we get so now we have a different look here and let's take the glow filter and let's drag it above the ai remix and see what happens well look and now we have a whole different look and we may say that looks really cool but it's a little too strong so we could take its opacity and we can start to peel it back a little bit okay so Again, we have all these different things that we can experiment just by dragging the order of these layers around. So I hope you can really see the possibilities here. And then we might say, you know what? What if I add, nobody says I can't add another impression filter. So what if I take and add another impression filter above everything here and see what kind of a look I get? And now I get a totally different look. And then I could maybe say, take its opacity, pull it back a little bit. And then we can start playing around with blend modes, you know, just experimenting on different blend modes. You know, I have my favorite ones like multiply, overlay, soft light, hard light, vivid light. All these different blend modes are really cool. And I think I like the hard light, but I think it's a little strong, so I'll pull the opacity back a little bit. Isn't that cool? We can get all these different image styles out of uh, a group of filters right here by uh, moving the layers around. Now, remember, these layers are all interactive, one with each other, and it's a totally non-destructive workflow, which I really love. Now, this uh, new filter we just added in the impression filter, let's drag it down to the bottom of the stack, and let's see what kind of a change we get when we do that. And now we totally change up the look altogether. So, this is all about fun. This is all about uh, playing around. So get creative, play with your layers. You can move those layers around. You know, you're not stuck with wherever you put a layer. It doesn't mean you have to keep it there. Experiment, play, see what kind of effects you get. Play with blend modes, play with the adjustments. I mean, it's really um, limitless what you can do inside of Topaz Studio 2. And that's why I call it my creative toolbox. Well, there it is. I hope you have a better understanding of how layers work inside of Topaz Studio 2. And it's really amazing with the non-destructive workflow and the interaction when you move those layers around. As you can see, you can get really different results. And sometimes it can take your creativity and push it in a whole new direction. So it's really helpful to play around with those layers. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.